All right, we are live. To those joining us, welcome, welcome. This is the Biotech Buzz with the one and only Vivi, Biotech Queen. How's it going, Vivi? Good. How are you? I'm great. Um, I won't be here for much longer. Just getting the show started. We should have Spencer joining us as well. Okay. But cool. I know we are all very excited to talk some biotech today. I know. Me too. For sure. Time and time again, the mainstream. Apparently that guy's excited too. <laughs> what? Oh yeah, and I was seeing some of the comments here. Hi guys, that's awesome. I don't. I, I'm not live yet, am I? We are live. We are live right we are? now. I don't yes. see. I don't Green see. Has been dead oh, long that's that's. I think it does a delay here because I don't see it at all. Okay, so let me double check. Spencer? But, um, Spencer should be hopping in in a second. Why okay. don't we? You know, I, I, I kind of want to, um, I got some feedback, you know, like sometimes often we, um, we take for granted that I've been, you know, investing bio for the last five, six years. And a lot of people are new and sometimes they, they get caught on trying to invest long term. So I may, I, I, I'm not, I made a slide, but I have a, um, a picture here. I just kind of want to explain for the new people out there what entails a, a, a study. Hopefully I won't be as boring, but I just wanted to explain them what each phase of a biotech is and just for them to be careful how do they get caught on, you know? So sure, yeah, I I'm think that's a great idea. Guys, uh, my screen and I'll show you, do let me know if you guys can see uh why am i i just want to oh yeah i have not the whole screen i want to just to to do the application window right yep. is the application yep. window i oh yeah here you go so can you guys see this can there everyone you see yes so um Wanted to explain to you guys a little bit what entails. So we look at here, um, preclinical is when um, they are studying in mice, they're studying in animal models, and they're talking about mechanisms of action, efficacy, toxicity. But then you go here to phase one. The phase one emphasizes safety, uh, involves 20 to 80 healthy volunteers on the drug, and is usually only looking at a most adverse events, you know, and they also produce information about the mechanism of a drug, metabolism, efficacy, and, and, and all. So then we move on to phase three. The goal of phase three is to obtain preliminary data on whether the drug works in a patient setting or not to a certain disease. So usually involves hundreds and hundreds of patients. And the information on safety continues to be evaluated and short-term side effects are also studied. Then you go to, this is phase two, then you go to phase three, which again, you talking about, uh, you know, it involves even more uh, patients. It's not the preliminary drug, so it's actually the actual study. Then once you release the phase three data, which by the way, guys, only three out of 10 companies will get um, passed into uh, a, a new drug application. So people often say the most money you make in, in biotech, it's phase one and two. Then if you know really well, you know, the data on phase three, I usually never play phase three uh, data reveal. I never hold my stocks through phase three because like I, I told you guys, it's a 30% uh, chance of efficacy. So 30%, three out of 10 companies will never make into a PDUFA. So then you have, you know, the, if the phase three trial is successful, the sponsor applies for a, an NDA, which is a new drug application with the FDA. And usually when I apply, we see kind of a bump in the stock as well. So this process includes a review of the proposed professional labeling, and uh, they also inspect on the manufacturing. So if it's favorable, then the FDA may approve the drug for marketing. So what do they do is they say, okay, we approved all the stuff that you gave it to us. It's looking good. So now we're going to send you to, uh, we're going to uh, do a date, establish a date. Okay. So um, you establish a date 
and they say, hey, the, the Pedufa, like for example, KMPH, the Pedufa is March 2nd. So six months ago, they submitted the NDA and now is the date. So here's one of the things that makes me more bullish in certain stocks than other. So for example, KMPH, there's no ADCO meeting. So ADCO meeting is when the FDA decides to do a hearing. They, they bring patients, they bring nurses, they bring doctors, and everybody gives a testimonial about the molecule. And so pretty much they're just showing their case why this drug should be approved. And at the end of the ADCO meeting, which by the way, any of us can um, log on and, and be, participate and listen to it. And once you get there, um, you get to hear what the vote is and why they're voting yes or no. And so when you have a drug that has no ad meeting, that gives me a lot of positive, gives me a lot of certainty that they're not concerned about data. They're not concerned about efficacy. They're not concerned about NL safety. So uh, for KMPH, there's no ADCO meeting. For AT and X, there's also no ADCO meeting. So then um, once you have the ADCO meeting, so um, if the day of the FDA, they get a CRL, is a CRL, your stock is gonna go, it's gonna plumb like 50%. And a CRL is a complete response letter, letting you know, letting the company know, hey, we did not like the data. The data, the sum of the efficacy kind of uh, it worries us, or you did not have your, all your ducks in a row in regards to manufacturing, so we have some concerns. So then the company has to scramble. So for example, with the Trevina, they got a CRL. And so Trevina, they had to look into uh, Q prolongation, QT prolongation, so safety data. So. That's gonna take you another year. So I just want you guys to know that when you do have a, a PEDUFA, be prepared if there's a no, be prepared to lose 50% of your investment. And you know, usually when there's some positivity and I believe in a molecule and I know that it, they just need a little bit more of a safety data, I will add more to my position. So. When you guys go to FDA approval, just be uh, conscious that there's the risks associated with. So, um, and you know, don't invest more than you can lose. And um, and that would be my only advice to you guys. So a lot of people like to take the investment out, their initial investment out and let the rest ride. Or some people just like to play the PDUFA. And I think because, you know, we are in a, going to kind of a bear market, you know, I feel like biotech is going to be hot because we can play those run ups into um, data release and we also can play those run ups into PDUFAs. So uh, in March, we're going to have a tons of a biotech conferences. So I feel like March is going to be our biotech month. Um, but for example, you know, if you guys look at a KMPH, you know, it's uh, started really low this morning and I added more to my position because I'm fe feeling very confident. And today, right now, is at $10.17. So that would be my little um, my little uh, teaching moment for you guys because I understand that a lot of people don't know what the phases, what the involvements are. And a lot of people just buy the stock because somebody on Twitter or somebody on YouTube told them to buy the stock. But then you don't realize that there's huge risks associated with uh, going into a PDUFA. So um, I am holding KMPH because I um, is an old molecule. You know that we already proven safety and the pro drug just kind of a trick to the molecule and made it into an even better with the less even less side effects so less insomnia less um less uh appetite so um i feel very confident so if there was a brand new molecule maybe i would have been a little more hesitant um but i i feel very confident so i am holding uh for my full position uh through pedufa also with the ATNX, the same way, um, I don't think the stock is behaving very well right now. Um, uh, ATNX, let me see. So ATNX right now is $11.85. Um, 
also i have no concerns here it's 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 for the good of the people uh, uh patients need this kind of hospitals or uh, insurance companies are going to need this kind of a molecule because it's going to be a oral formulation for breast cancer so i feel very confident i am holding also my full position here because again like if it, for some reason there's a manufacturing issue i'll double my position because i feel like this is a, at least a 20 25 dollar stock but it's not behaving well there was not a lot of you know like a lot of times you see a company like having a good run up to uh, pedufa and this was not quite the case you know kmph we had a huge run up when i told you guys when i came to the show it was a six dollars a share and look, we almost double, but also it's a low float. So, you know, you don't need a lot of volume to move the stock. So that's why my price targets a lot higher on that stock, because once we have the approval, you know, this company has no debt, has an excellent management team. So once you have the approval, I expect to be at least 30, 35 bucks. So now I want to tell you guys another secret of a biotech and it's textbook. Every time there's approval, for example, Spencer put GTHX on. You know, I told you guys about the stock since uh, the 20s. Um, GTHX. So it's a 24, but look, look at it came all the way to 36 bucks, right? That was the day of the approval right here. And it dipped. And why do they do that? Because they, now that it got approved, people sold the news and now they have to prove that they're gonna produce good sales results, right? So there's always a, a slightly dip, and then a couple of months later, it shoots back up. I still think this the the PT for this company is sixty seventy dollars a share, uh, long term. Uh, but there was a, a you know there was a decrease. Um, so don't expect that it's gonna go all the way up right after approval because now they wanted to um, have the company prove that they can actually sell the approved drug. So um, that's another thing that I wanted to, to get you guys very cautious about. And unfortunately, that's how the game is played. I usually sell 70% of my position at Pedufa date, when the approval date. And then what I usually do is I lock in my profits. And then when it stabilizes and the dust settles, I buy my positions back. And the reason I don't sell 100%, you guys, I've seen buyout offers the day of the approval or even before the day of the approval so you don't want to be stuck where you believe that the company is going to do really well long term and then you decided to sell 100 percent of your position because you want to lock 100 percent of your profits and then you miss a buyout opportunity so i always leave a little bit on the table so i'm always leaving a little bit of a shares because in case there's a you know there's a, a, a buyout offer on a table i can capitalize on that so um have nothing has changed the market it's not the greatest right now so but i nothing has changed fundamentally you guys um i think that because when the market in a bear market i think it cycles through so i feel like the finance sector is going to be the, the hit big time i think the tax sector is going to be hit big hit uh, big time but then also when there's a beginning of a bear market i feel like the biotech always seems to hold their own why because there's always catalysts they're not very driven about uh you know uh sales numbers or uh you know it, a lot of these companies don't have a, a, a huge sales but they have a catalyst so that's how i believe that um that's why i believe that we will be able to to do good uh holding uh biotech st stocks now another thing i was going to tell you guys um you know people were, were like quick to to jump on me about ontx um you know uh technically it was looking great but they threw some information there on mice and unfortunately you guys when you have a drug that it's not it's you don't have a company that's not gonna have any approval anytime soon all they do is dilute and reverse split so in theory it's awesome like i'll give you guys an example i bought a 11 000 shares of idera idra i believe in a company i bought it at four dollars today if i had to cap all my shares because i sold it at a loss 
today, five years later, they still don't have an approved drug. They are coming up. I think Kadoof is coming this year for their melanoma, melanoma drug. And if I had not sold, I would have to have a $32 a share to break even. Does that make sense? $32 a share. Look at Adara, Adara today. A-D-R-A. -A. Uh, let me see. Adara Pharma. A, I, I, I'm sorry, IDRA, $4.20. It's pretty much the same price I bought it five years ago, you guys, in 2015. But they went through reverse splits and offerings. Why? Because they don't have an approved drug. So don't hold long. If you want to maybe hold long, maybe buy 200 shares that you want to keep long and then add another 200 shares and then trade around your core. Sell 200 when you have uh, some news. Sell it on a high, buy back on a low. Sell on a high, buy back on a low. So that way you keep your average down. But don't hold for many, many years, you guys, if there's no approved drug. I mean, look at this example. $32 a share would it be today for me to break even this company. So now it, the company, they have a really good product. So I'm looking into maybe buy back. I need to find out when the Pedufa date is, but maybe five years later, it's time for me because I love the, 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 the team, the management team. I love the Bake Brothers on a huge stake of this company, but I would have lost even more. I lost a lot of money. So I am just trying to, um, show you guys what my experience for anybody out there you know oh yeah i'll leave in my account long my ten thousand shares of adara became eight hundred dollar eight hundred shares of adara at a 32 bucks a share so uh and that that would be my advice for you guys i know that some people just say oh i'll buy and tuck in my account but you're gonna have you're gonna need years and years and years to ever to get your money back. So don't invest long in any companies that don't have um, a catalyst uh, coming up or a drug approval. So my my rule of thumb is I will um, only uh, now invest in companies that they're usually an approved drug already, like BCRX, ATNX. They all have approved drugs. TRVN. They have approved drugs or companies that are about to um, have an approval. So ITRM have a July PDUFA date, you know? Um, so uh, I would not buy anything today that's five years from now. So don't make the same mistake I make. That's why uh, it will be my advice for you guys. And um, do you guys have any questions at all? I just came here and talk, talk, talk. No, but that was fantastic. That was fantastic. Oh wait, is my mic working? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, that that was great, Vivi. Uh, you guys started without me, but that's okay. Uh, uh, I'm I'm here. You can't escape me. Uh, Vivi brought up a good point though, uh, uh, and we talk about this all the time on, on our other shows, right? Is if you never sell a loser, if you hold on to it, thinking, oh, eventually it'll turn around. Eventually, I'll get my money back. Well, what happens? if you just never sell your losers and you sell your winners is eventually you're just stuck holding all losers, right? Yes. I mean, it's obvious. Yeah. So, so, you know, taking a loss is not the worst thing in the world. It's, no. you know, you know what I mean? So Look at me. I've been talking, look at my microphone. I was like, <laughs> I am not plugged. That's okay. We, we still hear you. But if, let me see if you guys can hear me a little bit better. Okay. Uh, is that better? Whoa. Is that better? Yeah, a little better. Is it? Yes. Yeah? Okay. I'm okay. sorry, you guys. Yeah. Please provide. Oh, okay. 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 David NYC in the chat. Please provide a list of future winners. David, no. <laughs> If we go knew, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. I'm not gonna. It, I, I'm it, not it, posting it, anything that I don't think is gonna it, win. It, if we knew, if we had a crystal ball, we wouldn't be doing this show because we wouldn't have to, right? No. Vivi would be on a beach somewhere if she had a crystal ball. If we knew for sure, we don't know for sure. That, that's silly. Come on. That's silly. Yeah. Okay. But well, let's go to the chat. Uh, there are some, I, I didn't mean to single you out, David, but, but we don't really, you know, Vivi does her research. She does her homework. She does her DD, but 
but nobody at the end of the day, nobody really knows. So, so for for her to sit here and say, "Oh, this this is for sure a winner," would be disingenuous of her, right? Okay, let's let's go to the chat. Ticker is mm-hmm. flying. Um, let me scroll up. I want to go first, and yeah. let's see who got some questions in. Wow, that was a great presentation. Just to, if you missed all this. Rewind the clock, rewind the video about 10, 15 minutes. Vivi gave a great explanation of what these trials mean uh, and what what the purpose of each of each stage is. So great stuff. I didn't know a lot of that. I actually I didn't know most of that. So so thanks for uh thanks for sharing, Vivi. Um okay. Do we know A D I L? Do do we know that one? A dial? Uh no, not I'm not familiar with that one. Okay, moving right along. Moving right along. We're going to go quick. Do we know? I hear a lot of people want to talk about NSPR, right? I'm sure they do. Fine. Let's go to NSPR. Yes. Um, well, fundamentally, nothing has changed. I um, So let me, let me just show you guys something here um, and why I'm so bullish about this company. And I feel like this is going to be a $10 company one day. You know, So I'm definitely going to hold um, long here for sure. Um, so let me, so let me share some more, um, let me share another, another screen with you guys. So, um, I don't, where, where do I, where do I get, oh, here you go. Oh no, where do I get to, uh, to, uh, I don't have an option to share a screen anymore. What? That's yeah. not right. Share screen. And there's no option to share at the bottom. No. Oh, yeah, they are. It went all the way to the bottom. Okay, share, share screen. Okay, so application window. I want to show you guys. Um, so how? Let me just separate both of windows because then we can. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Share. There we go. Okay. Can you guys see? What do we got? What is this? So this is um, NSPR and why I am so um, bullish about this company, right? So if you guys go see here, let me just make this a big screen. Is it better for you guys to see? No, you got to zoom way in. Can you, can you just zoom in a lot? Yeah, yeah zoom in more, 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 more. A little more. Is that good? Yeah, great, perfect. Let's go. Okay, let's roll. So it's uh, Inspire MD is a commercial state medical device company focused on stroke prevention. So there's two types of stents. Um, you have a stents in your heart that you put it to prevent angina, right? To prevent um, having uh, angina. And uh, angina, it's a shortness of breath. It's a lot of times it doesn't work with the therapy. So. They have a stent for this, uh, the carotid uh, uh, vein. Those are responsible for stroke. Okay. So if you guys see here, um, the lead phys- the lead CFOs and CEOs, I worked in big companies, Pfizer, um, BMS. Um, and then when you go here, for me, this is the most bullish point is Dr. Rubin was named uh, the board of directors in October 2020. He's a co-author for more than 280 clinical publications and has contributed to 20 textbooks in the fields of interventional cardiology and vascular surgery. Because when you do the keratoid, it's vascular surgery. He was a a key contributor for CRAS trial, which, you know, that's a huge uh, trial for, uh, is a cardiovascular drug. And he was the first guy to actually uh, be the pioneer to put the first stent in a patient. So he is part of the board. And here is the pipeline. So the C guard here is the one that I told you guys is the carotid stent with embolic prevention system that is designed to improve a patient safety. So you put the stent in and you prevent a um, patient from having stroke. And so when you look at here, you know, the landscape and the inspire potential. So you look at here, the, the carotid artery disease is uh, 80% is surgical, okay? So, um, and here, the stroke is the second biggest cause of the death globally. And this is the surgical approach. That's how they do, um, they put in the risk of a complications are pretty big. 
So when you go here, so I'm sure I'm boring you guys. So Seaguard, so this is the convention stance. Look at this data, you guys. This is comparing with conventional stance. So Seaguard came in with a mesh that not only uh, protects the patients, but also protects the plaques from building back up. So what happened is when patients do have a, um, a heart attack, not just angina, is usually the main, the, 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 the main artery that's blocked in your heart. But stroke is for this uh, artery here, the carotid arteries. And you look at here, look at the difference in C guard versus conventional stance and surgery. And the surgery, it's very, very risky, okay? And this is, guys, I love this name, is a billion market opportunity, billion. So uh, this is the, the keratoid procedures today are primarily surgical, look at that. And the procedures tomorrow could be mostly minimum invasive with a C-guard. So this is the market we're going for. So right now we have uh, active selling in 33 countries and over 90% of the sales are through channel distributions. And now we just expand in um, in Japan. No, I'm sorry, in China. And then we just had an ID approval in September of 2020. Okay, so here's the pathway for the U.S. market. You know, you look at here um, the 12 to 15 month um, enrollment. So uh, the reason I, I'm, I'm holding some long term is because we're gonna have updates on our trials in the United States, and also we're gonna have sales. Uh, worldwide. So they have this drug already approved. And think about the China market, it's huge. So it's not a drug, it's not a stance that's not approved someplace else. So it's uh, the price is 1650 per stance. So the addressable market estimated to be 317 million. So look at this potential, you guys. So um, our lead product, Seaguard, advanced rapidly, 31% growth. In Q4, 20,000 total protected stands sold for, for the, to date with excellent results. So here you go, the commercial, so the expansion. So, and here's what is interesting too. Look at the business development. I see this company being bought out by either Medtronic uh, or Stryker, you know, any of the device, look at Medtronic right here. So I, I wouldn't be uh, surprised, uh, Gary uh, Rubin, he, is, he was responsible for a, um, a buyout when he was in a different company prior to joining uh, the board of directors of this company. So look at this, guys. Um, annual revenue, expect, 72 million in 2020. So... Um, that will be my presentation for Inspire. So the only um, hiccup that I have with Inspire, and I think that's gonna, that's why we haven't taken off yet, is because um, there's a proxy vote for a reverse split, and people, shareholders don't like reverse splits. I'm holding some, and I have uh, some money on the side. I will add it to my position after reverse split. I'm not very concerned because they wanna to move from um, Amex to Nasdaq. And uh, that's one of uh, the reasons they wanted to um, to do the reverse split because um, not only they they want to move up, but they also wanted to make it attractive for all the investors. And in February tenth, um, all the insiders added to their position. So if you guys go in the SEC files, you're gonna see it wasn't given to them. They bought it with their own money. Gary Rubin bought seven hundred thousand shares with his own money. So. How can you not be bullish about this company, you guys? I'm super bullish and I'm holding full position here. I don't care if we have a reverse split or not because there's so many things in a pipeline we will bounce right back. So I'm holding full. That would be um, my um, pitch for um, Spire MD. Hey, uh, Vivi, if you'd like, we can stay on it for a few more minutes past three and do some more, uh, do some more questions from the chat if, if you're into that. Uh, do they want us to hear more of me? How about this? If you want us to end right now, uh, put one in the chat. If you'd like us to hang out for a few, few more minutes, maybe at a 310 or maybe around there, put two in the chat. Let us know if, you, if, if you've had enough. I'm getting some yeses. So, again, one, if you, th if you want us to hop on out of here, 
two if you want Are us you to guys hang. Tired of me? I'm, not, I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing a single one. That must mean they want us to hang. All right, okay, Vivi, cool. let, let's let's hang for a few, and we'll yeah, do some okay. more. Tickers, we haven't done that many. Oh my god, yes. the, two, the twos are overwhelming. 